Welcome to Liturgy the Word. I am Deacon Rick, and today is the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, as Christ is King of the world and saves his people from their sins, Mary is Queen of the earth because of her role in the story of divine redemption, serving as the mother of our Savior. And Blessed John Henry Newman says this about uh, the Blessed Queen. He says, This is why the Blessed Virgin is called powerful sometimes all-powerful, because she has, more than anyone else, more than all angels and saints, this great prevailing gift of prayer. No one has access to the Almighty as his mother has. None has merit such as hers. Her son will deny her nothing that she asks, and herein lies her power. While she defends the church, neither height nor depth, neither men nor evil spirits, neither great monarchs nor craft of man nor popular violence, can avail to harm us, for human life is short, but Mary reigns above, a queen forever. So today we celebrate that memorial of the queenship of our Blessed Virgin Mary. So let's continue to ask for her intercession in all things, as we always do. But first, before we begin, let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins, Christ have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your Son to be our mother and our Queen, graciously grant that, sustained by her intercession, we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus, thus says the Lord, I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. 
I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people, and I shall be your God. The word of the Lord. Wash away. heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Wash away. back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Wash away. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants and mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then the king said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to meet his guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we hear about a parable about this king throwing this awesome party and everyone is invited. It's open to everyone. But we have to understand what it means to accept his invitation, that our actions and our choices have consequences and that they matter. And it does matter how we live and what we do. So Jesus uses the story of the wedding feast to teach us a lesson. And the gospel is kind of scary at the end. It's a warning that we should all take pretty serious. Um, and my fear when I read this is that I accept the invitation like the man did in the story, in the gospel. I accept the invitation of Jesus. I say yes to him. But then I fail to carry through with my life of what he's asking me. The man without the wedding garment at this feast in the gospel didn't ignore the king. He didn't refuse his invitation. He wanted the good things. He wanted to come and he did come. But he wasn't able to break away from his sinful ways and live committed to Jesus. His conversion was incomplete. He showed up, but he didn't change his ways. Maybe by choice, maybe by neglect or omission. But that is the lesson to learn. That the man showed up wasn't properly prepared. He wasn't properly clothed because he didn't change anything in his life. Still lived the same, acted the same, looked the same as he did before he said yes to the invitation. And we really don't know whether he was just a hypocrite and just wanted to look good with everybody else or he was somewhat quietly indifferent. But it didn't end well. It is true that Jesus calls us where we are. He goes out to the streets, finds us as we are. We don't need to clean ourselves up first. We are all sinners. We're all dirty, broken. We all need his love and to be healed and accepted. So come as you are is the initial call. But his, and his love reaches us where we are. And then we say yes to his invitation. And that's where we say yes, take on some responsibility. Because his love refuses to let us stay where we are. The point of his love is to transform us, to change us. He loves us as the sinners. He just hates the sin. And sin is the absence of his love. So he wants to heal us from that sin and change us, to save us from ourselves. But we have to do our part. We have to be willing to change, to change our own dirty, soiled rags of our prior life that we call clothes, and then dress ourselves in the wedding garments of Christ, those of truth and justice and charity and mercy, holiness. That's the themed color of the marriage feast of the heavenly lamb, and that we have to be willing to wear that. Yes, his door is open to everyone, but his grace isn't just a gift to us. It's a free gift, yes, but it's also a grave responsibility that we just can't go on we can't go on living the same life we did before we met Christ, before he came into our life. We have to change our spiritual clothes, is what he's talking about, to live now pure and good and holy. We still make mistakes, we still sin, we still fall off, but we're working ever towards a holy life, a new life in Christ. We can't enter as a sinner and remain as a sinner. We enter as a sinner, but through Christ we become a saint. That's the goal. And not wanting to change, not wanting to become the saint like that because it's too hard or you don't want to because we're just lazy, is basically saying, I'm fine where I am. Thanks for the invitation, but I'm good. I'm going to skip the party and stay home. And missing the joyous, awesome wedding feast of, of uh, Jesus, like the greatest party that there ever was, that would be the real tragedy. So the takeaway from this, try daily to love God with all your heart in prayer and personal worship in your own way. Try daily to love your neighbor and put their needs before your own. And try daily to love yourself as you were made in the image of God with however God created you to be with those gifts and those talents and those abilities to use him, use for God. And finally, most importantly, maybe try daily to put on Christ, to think about his will for your life and what that means and live out his gospel in your life. Because we are all invited to his wedding feast. It's time now to go and get ready. So two questions we should be asking ourselves from this gospel. How can we connect with God more in prayer to be in tune of what he is asking us to do and what he's asking of us? And number two, how can, that was number one. Number two, how can we live the gospel more fully in our life right now? Thank you for joining us. God bless you.